All right, so tonight I want to make a video about this Casablanca Zephyr in my living room. <clears throat> this fan dates from uh, it's either 1980 or 1981. It does have the tag on top, but it's from the switch over time when they were moving from this style canopy to the hang through canopy like that Delta II has over there. And uh, when they were also switching from cardboard box variable speed, which this fan has to slumber quiet. Some other differences for Casablanca fans around this age include the fact that the motor tag is just a simple stick on piece of gold paper. It's not the same riveted on metal tag that later Casablanca's had. This has a similar gold tag on top of the motor that has a handwritten date on serial number on it. Um, so we've got that. It is cardboard box variable speed. I had to do a little work on it to deoxidize some contacts to make it work correctly, but now this fan is perfect. This came from my local Habitat. Got it without blades, so I used the blades uh, off of a Victorian I have from the same year. So these are B15C, which is walnut with cane blades. I'm gonna show the fan from all angles here. Has the pretzel blade irons, which I have always liked. This particular fan here, I have it in my living room, I love it. It scratches an itch for me. It's one of those fan book, if you've ever seen a copy of the book that Casablanca funded in the early 80s called The Fan Book. This is one of those fans that's in there looking so picture perfect gorgeous that when I first saw that book and I was a teenager in high school, I wanted those fans so bad and I didn't have any, couldn't afford any, didn't have any money because what kind of high schooler does really. So yeah, to finally have this, definitely loving this. I see it from some other angles here. Stand up on the couch, give you a little bit of an elevated view. Oh, it looks like a paint drip. Look at me going right for the ugliest spot in the fan first. All right, there we go. So we do, of course, the spiral down rod with that original style J-hook mounting. This fan does swing. I, I've got to be honest, these have really grown on me. The canopy, I don't really like it. It looks too small. The motor housing on a Casablanca, the massing of it is so big that that canopy just looks too small. Hang True Canopy looks perfect with a Casablanca fan. They really nailed it with that. Having said that, I just love the way J-Hook fans sway. Every time you turn this fan on and off by pulling the chain, it causes the fan to sway a little bit and rock back and forth. And that's just not something you get with a ball and socket or hang true fan. So I've got this one wired up with the no light kit at the moment. It's on the constant power that I have in this box. I use the pull chain to turn it on and off. I only run this on the slowest speed. I turn it on when I wake up in the morning, turn it off when I go to bed at night, just runs all day long on the slowest speed. So. Let's go ahead and do that first. Then we'll turn it back off and do a spin up to high, really explore this fan a little. So this is with the cardboard box variable speed control right there set all the way on the lowest of low. A combination of uh, cane blades and pretzel irons somehow looks so good with this GE vent. Definitely a childhood fan. This is the kind of thing you saw all over the place in the 80s and 90s.
this is the aesthetic low that was originally envisioned for these fans. It's that, that idea that Burton had that they should look like just that aesthetic in the background, not really moving air, just giving you old timey memory syndrome. And it works, it works. There's nothing like the look of a Fasco Charleston on low. It's just mesmerizing. I could stare at it for hours. Great living room fan. So now let's go ahead and turn it back off and turn this up to high. Now I've got nine foot ceilings here, so I have to stand, I'm six feet tall and it is honestly uncomfortable. I have to stand on my tiptoes and really stretch my arm out to reach this thing. And that's with no obstruction underneath it. I mean, if you had one of these over a dining room table or over your bed, I can see why the variable speed control died out. It seems like a cool idea. Seems like the kind of thing where you say, oh, that was the days of great fans, man. They really cheaped out when they went to three speeds. But no, uh, this just just asking to get a finger ripped off in the middle of the night, trying to adjust it in the dark. It's a pain. The only way to implement variable speed conveniently for your customer is the way that the banana fans or some of the banana fans were, where there's two pull chains side by side coming out of the same finial nut there. And when you pull one down, the other goes up. It's, it's a weird system. It's almost like adjusting window blinds, you know, where you pull one down and the other goes up and that's the variable speed control for your fan. Pull, pull one of the chains and the fan goes faster, pull the other one and it goes slower. That's great. That'll work on a cathedral ceiling, work over a bed, work over any furniture. But anyway, back to this fan. So we've adjusted the variable speed control all the way up to high. Let's go ahead and watch this spin up. And I, I expect a little torque out of this fan. Yeah, it's, it's very fast. So everything's original here. Um, like I haven't replaced the flywheel or anything. It's not cracked, nothing wrong with it. I'm one of those people, uh, I'm in the camp of, if it works, use it until it doesn't work, and then fix it so it works right. Um, I don't want to not use my fans because I'm worried about rubber deteriorating or something. If I can't use it and it has to just live under glass like a museum piece, then the life is sucked out of it. It becomes an empty skeleton of a thing, no longer fun. So now I, I enjoy using my fans just like I did as a kid when they were common and they were everywhere. And, um, it's really fun. That's part of what brings back the memories, I think. But uh, either way, I enjoy finding an old fan like this, almost 40 years old, in perfect running condition. And I use it as a daily driver, so to speak, and I will until there's a problem with it, and then I'll fix it so I can use it as a daily driver again. Casablanca built these things to be repaired. They built them to last. They didn't build them to be thrown away. They built them to be repaired. So... Uh, for a little bit there. I don't know why I keep going right for that damn paint splotch. Whatever. You want to just hit the... Let's do it. Let's hit the reverse switch while it's running on high just to see what the fuck happens. I'm guessing, and this is just my personal guess here, I'm guessing it reverses. Let's see. Oh, and quickly. My goodness. Like it means it. 
oh, but that is like seriously fucking with some of my plants over there. Alright, well, we're gonna go ahead and not do that. So here's a spin down. And then we'll turn it back to forward and do another spin down. There were lingering questions about this fan. When I got it at Habitat, it came with everything you see here except the blades and down rod and canopy. This set of blades, down rod, and canopy came off of a Victorian from the same year, so they're correct for this fan. So in other words, when I got this, it was the motor, it was the pretzel irons, and it had a different down rod and canopy that were Casablanca, but were it, not original to the fan. It was really weird. A lot of unanswered questions about the history of this fan, but either way, um, it's been maintained relatively well. There's a, there's a few minor scratches in the finish, and outside of that, no complaints. As you can see, the bearings are in great shape, no noise when it's operating, and the spin down on this is really slow, exactly like you want it. Brass finish isn't pitted or oxidized. Still looks really nice. I like to sit here on the couch, look up. Hard to do this with the camera, but with the human eye, you can see the plants and the fan at the same time, and it's just, it's really nice. All right, so now that it's off, let's go ahead, flip that back to forward. Do another spin up. It is, it's no longer gaining speed, that's high, and a spin down. Real childhood fan for me, antique brass, GE vent, four blade fans were big, big, big for me in my childhood. They were everywhere, very, very common. My babysitter had them, pizza parlor had them, shoe store had them, school had them, they had them in the principal's office, summer camp had them, I mean, everywhere I turned. I mean, granted, it was a very common style, that's why Hampton Bay ripped it off with the landmark, but that was a cheaper, thinner five-blade fan. I remember fans like this, thick motor housing, four blades. And Casablanca wasn't the only one doing it. I mean, everybody from Codep to you name it had a nice GE vent fan for a while there in the late 70s and early 80s. I do remember specifically a lot of Casablancas, though. I mean, these were really highly regarded fans back in the day. A lot of people spent money on them. Still going, still going. Almost there. Stopped. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust that variable speed control back, stepping over the coffee table here. Excuse me. Let's adjust this variable speed control back down and then turn it back on. So it's just the way I normally use it now. Forward and on the lowest of low. Also got in the house right now, of course, got in the kitchen, the 36 inch original. This is my Delta II blender fan. In the bathroom here, we've got the Caribbean Breeze. So, Anyway, that's the special on the 
Zephyr right there. I'm probably calling it a delta all along. I mean, the difference is simple. The Zephyr is variable speed and the delta is three speed, but it's the same fan, come on. Hope y'all are enjoying celebrating. Wish you all a merry covid miss. And uh, yeah, happy COVID's giving. Thank you.